Paul Dale Roberts and Diana Jackson Stilton Research Papers Podcast. Goat's Head Demon Banished. The Sully Howard Story. Written by Admin. Ghosts and Supernatural. Many people ask how I got started in the paranormal investigating business and are and are interested in my first cases. Below is a blast from the past, a case from my early career in investi- paranormal investigating. I see dead people as the famous line from the Sixth Sense. I do believe there are f- psychic senses, or if you like to call them intuitives, that exist in this world. Of course, there are a lot of fraudulent, fraudulent psychics that one eye that I only one thing, and that is all mighty dollar sign. A real sensitive will assist others in a time of need and do not ask for payment for their services. This Saturday, August 19th, August 19th, 2007, I met up with a real sensitive. Her name is Sally Howard. She had been aware of her presence throughout the whole life. I gave Shannon Miss McCarp. Mac- Sharon McCabe, McCabe, president of HPI, haunted and paranormal investigations, in Northern California, a call and briefed her about my upcoming meeting with Sally. Shannon was quite intrigued and told me to f- ha- find out her story. I called Shannon on Saturday while she was conducting a second tour of haunted places in Placerville. She had a good turnout with 33 members showing up. Her call members, Michael, Michelle Stump, Jennifer Bracker, Chris Christen, Jerry Vincent, John Ratchet von Valdari, and Michael Pale Paykel were ready, willing, and to assist Shannon throughout this full day tour. Shannon told me that when she met up with some of everyone at the 400 Main Street parking garage, MPM members were eagerly waiting for the tour to start. From refusism in Shannon's voice, I could tell everyone was having a blast, but my thoughts were about the sensitive I was about I would meet on Sunday. Well, it, it is that some people can sense ghosts while others, like myself, can't. Yes, I've seen a full body apparition with my own eyes. I have touched my by an entity, but I'm not. That is not because I'm a sensitive. I was just fortunate to see and feel these entities. After forty some investigations into the paranormal, as I drove to Sharon's restaurant in Green Haven to meet up with Sally Howard, I was greeted with a big smile. Sally has a lo- long story. It seems like ghosts have followed her throughout her whole life. It appears that Sally's whole family may be intuitive, and that the deceased members of her family come to visit often. Let's start from the beginning and follow Sally's life. To her present day home in Green Haven. Home in Cleveland, Ohio. When Ali stayed in Cleveland, she'd visit with her sister a lot. Her sister was obsessed with the movie The Exorcist and carried around her The Exorcist book with her all times. Her sister dabbled with the Ouija board and she also felt like she had a psychic connection with Sally. Sally noticed that her sister's personality started changing. It seemed that the, the her sister was coming meaner. One night, Sally experienced the bed, bed that she was lying on moving. On another night, Annie, Sally hears a gun go off. She runs into her sister's room and learns later that her sister, for no apparent reason, fired that gun. When asked initially why she fired it, she said she accidentally fired a gun. Her sister later confessed to her that she, she fired the gun purposely. I didn't understand why she fired it. Sally's so sister started becoming more macabre as the nail scope, there was now a sculpted snake and a dagger of display in the house. Then the final night that Sally stayed with her sister, the most strangest thing occurred. Sally was sitting on a couch. She was paralysed, unable to move. She looks towards her sister room and sees an old, ma- an old man beast, an entity with the body of a man and the head of a goat. This goat head demon then slivers to the floor and starts crawling 
Sally stops praying in her mind and the van beast vanishes. When Sally relates the story to me, she's filled with positive energy. Perhaps it's the robust positive energy that vanquished the negative energy of this creature. She never encountered the, the until again, but she never went back to her sister's house again either. Home in Pittsburgh, California. Sally is visited by her ten-year-old deceased cousin. Appears like an angelic figure to her. Sally is lying on her bed with no apparently reason. Falls off the bed and looks up. And her ten-year-old cousin is looking down at her. Uh, it almost appears that her deceased family members watch over Sally. Perhaps they're the ones that keep the head goat-headed demon at bay. Perhaps Sally was pushed off the bed by some negative unseen force. Sally believes that her divorced deceased auntie, Noreen, once jabbed her on the leg, causing her leg to bleed. Sally was talking somewhat negatively about Aunt Noreen, and shortly afterwards she felt the jab on her leg. Aunt Noreen was a sort of odd fellow. She used one long toenail, which became a family conservation 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 piece could it have been auntie's the rain's toenail that jabs sally in her leg grandma's house home in pennsylvania sally said that it, her, it, it said that her grandma's home is definitely haunted the old furnace shutter door constantly opens and shuts on its own the cold the dining room light switch would come on and off off and on. Silver around the house is always being moved around or repositioned. Uncle Bobby, who is deceased, makes his presence known in the house. Her uncle, happy Kate Howard, was once visited by his deceased ex wife that stood on the side of his bed watching him. Auntie Harry appears to be insensitive because she never forgot he never forgot seeing the ghost presence of two twins that appeared before him. Looking down at him from the top of the stairs. Two twins he f- finds out died in a fire that in that home. Home of V Street in Sacramento. When Sally stayed at her home in V Street, her grandmother astral projected herself to Sally's home. Sally saw her grandmother fully dressed and just peered at Sally. Sally's grandmother was alive at this period of time. And another night Sally had a full had her family come over and the brass lamps were turning on and off by themselves. They hear a neighbourhood heard footsteps on the stairwell and there was no one there. When the occurrences happened, Sally felt something telling her that it was her deceased father trying to communicate with her. Well, strange happenings occurred at, the, at this V Street apartment. Even some outla- outside influences ha- happened here. One day, a frantic neighbour came over and told her this, there was he was cursed by an old Oakdale witch. He went to use Sally's restroom and an unseen force pushes him into Sally's bathroom. The neighbour felt it was the Oakdale witch that caused him to be pushed into the bathroom because he constantly ridiculed his residential witch. This residential witch during Christmas time in her home at on V Street, she snapped a picture of two children by a Christmas tree, a fast moving orb that was captured on her on her regular camera. Home on Twenty Second Street in Sacramento, while Sally lived in that, this location, he was constantly being harassed by the Church of Scientology members. They were trying to persuade Sally to join their cult. After being mentally assaulted, hearing about even the ranting of the Scientologists, she went to bed and instantly started astral projecting, leaving the body. And when all of a sudden there was a loud bang on the door, she went back into her body and looked to see who was knocking. Only did you discover there was no one at the door. When Sally was telling me this story, her daughter calls me on her cell. I need to tell her that the microwave almost blew up. Sally says that it's weird when she relates her stories. Something bad started happening. and here was a good example of that. Home in Greenhaven, when Sally was being really dating her ex-husband, 
she would have her ex-husband sleep in her son's room. Her ex-husband had spe- had a spectacular evening one night in Sally's room, son's room. When he woke up to see an entity standing over him, watching him, he had a hard time getting the image out of the head. One day, he was looking through Sally's photo albums, the chemical entity was looking over him. It was Sally's grandfather. When he saw the picture, he looked at as white as a sheet and yelled out, That's him, that's him, that's the ghost who's looking down at me. Sally has felt this. Put the grey sense before a whole bedroom. Sally actually got scared, pushed, went back. At times she hears a penny, and so one night. She did see, her deceased grandmother held her hand while she laid in the bed. I felt like a pros- prosecutor as, as I repeatedly would ask questions over again. I was looking for any inconsistencies, any inconsistencies in Sally's stories. There was none. All the stories were reiterated again, as if the stories were playing back on a cassette tape. Sally was an amazing life. I am sitting next to her. It's almost like an aura engulfed my aura. I feel this surge of passive energy and engulfing my own energy. Before I meet, met up with Sally, I was still tired from a block party attended last night with my romantic novelist friend, Gloria Romez, in which there was a large assortment of food, live music, jacuzzi retreat and every kind of drink under the sun. When, you had a, when they had a joke contest at block this block party, I went out and told two of my best jokes, I won a huge patio umbrella. This whole block party lasted late into the evening and I felt drained on Sunday when I met up with Sally. But as we sat together and I wrote her story, her energy seemed to boost my own energy. There's something definitely different about Sally. I believe it's because she's an intuitive. I only wish I could see with her eyes. Because this is the one person who has a foot in her her own reality and another thought in the world of paranormal. As I finish this story, I call upon the Michelin st- st- so MPI research at Michelin is looking into the puzzle. Richard and Hortings are 25 victims of serial killers. Leonard Lake and Charles Nick Cavius County. Michelle asks, Are you up for this investigation? My answer is, Why not? How odd that I could get a phone call back in the investigation because I just finished watching a movie with Luke Wilson and Kate Bessner called Vacancy, which is loosely based on Leonard Lake, Charles Nick's murders. There's always an abundance of investigations of HPI. My job is never done. <laughs>